I started to write about dance probably a year after I stopped dancing myself. So um, really, actually, you got the three right, but I would rather say maybe 30 at the age of, I don't know, 29 or 30. And it happened very naturally for me. I, I had been a dancer, and for some reason, um, this is an art form that just has a, has kind of a grip on me and uh, won't let me go. I find, I think the dance is just extraordinary art form and the writing of it is also an art you know to kind of recreate in language you know physical actions I mean all of the arts journalism fields are magnificent but and I do write about them all on my blog artsmeme.com but somehow dance is just it's my love and uh, yeah I started to write about dance um, I had was had been dancing in New York um, I to get away from New York and away from the East Village, um, I moved to Hong Kong at about 29 or 30 and was living in Hong Kong trying to forge a career um, in investment banking to get away from the art world. <laughs> and uh, uh, something happened, which is that Marvin Gaye dropped dead in the US. This was 1983. And I had met socially um, the arts and entertainment editor for the South China Morning Post, a great old British colonial newspaper, English language newspaper in Hong Kong. And I called this guy, you know, deeply impassioned and said, Peter, uh, hello, Martin G Marvin Gaye just dropped dead and there is one woman who can write his obituary on this whole island and you are speaking to her. So actually, I, I, I launched as an art journalist uh, an arts journalist writing about Marvin Gaye, not, but then I quickly segued into writing what I what I really knew, which was dance. Years later, I moved to Los Angeles and um, I wrote for the Long Beach Press Telegram for many years, uh, which was a good dance beat actually, because as you know, we have the Orange County Performing Arts Center in in OC, and they're very steady and long term presenters of the major, the big classical ballet companies. So I had that beat, and then yeah, I, moving into the LA market. Uh, I wrote for La Opinion, so um, I, w I was translated into Spanish, and I used to venture into the bodegas of Los Angeles and kind of look around and say, my readers, <laughs> the, the fact is, is that no one really read me, you know, in the, Eng in the English language world, and, uh, but since 2008, I've been writing for the LA Times, and, and life really changed for me when, when I got published in the Times. I heard a great story, you know, there's a, a what do you call it, an um, experimental filmmaker named Kenneth Anger. And um, there was a turning point where Deborah was talking to him. Now, this is somebody that does films sort of like the film we saw there, even farther out crazy, but he's very well known, very incredible. And he talked to Deborah, and he turned her on to a new idea. Well, that's right. Um, I met Kenneth Anger at a uh, classic film event. I kind of... Um, I'm very active in um, the film community here. In fact, I, um, in 2009, I was very active in uh, saving the film program at, at the County Museum at LACMA. I, I headed up that protest movement. And the point is, is that I, of course, enjoy the fantastic uh, film screenings of Los Angeles. And I, I did meet Kenneth Anger. Uh, who's now a pretty senior citizen. He's in his 80s, and he learned that I am a dance writer, and he said the not very cryptic words to me, someone needs to write about Jack Cole. That was it. Someone needs to write about Jack Cole. Now, I vaguely knew the name Jack Cole, uh, and Jack Cole, uh, of course, uh, lived in our city here in Los Angeles. He was not an Angelino. He was an East Coast guy, but here he spent decades of his life and um, I picked up the ball. I kind of, after hearing that from Kenneth Anger, I went home and Googled. This is year 2008. There was precious little about Jack Cole on the internet at that time. Now there's quite a bit more. And I learned that he had choreographed Diamond Zero Girl's Best Friend for Marilyn Monroe in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which I had just seen on the huge screen of the Los Angeles Theater on Broadway downtown as part of the LA Conservancy's Last Remaining Seats series. I mean, I'm sharing all of this LA lore because this story has been for me a kind of gaining a root in this city where I have lived. I'm also not a local person, but I've lived here about 23 years, very much as a foreigner. But through Jack Cole, and we're going to show you some fabulous photos of Jack Cole, Jack Cole has been a way for me to really own 
the scene here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I started, so I wrote a, a big piece in the Los Angeles Times about Jack Cole's relationship with Marilyn Monroe, which is probably the only Marilyn Monroe story that is n not known. And in fact, she had a long-term relationship with him. He worked with her on six of her films. Um, and um, yeah, then uh, Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival picked up on me, having read that piece, and I spoke about Jack Cole at, at what's called The Pillow, which is a summer dance festival in, in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. And it's, it's rolled, steamrolled from there to the point that uh, just about two weeks ago, I filmed in Atlanta uh, for Turner Classic Movies um, an evening uh, uh, celebrating the, chore the film choreography of Jack Cole. I'm very happy about it. I'm very happy about it. So that's, that is going to air on September 10th on TCM, Turner Classic Movies. And I co-hosted the evening with Robert Osborne, and it was a big thrill for me, and a big one for the dance critics, that TCM put a dance critic on their, on their channel. So I'm just, I'm just bursting with joy about it. And um, before we talk more about Cole and like why I've connected with him so deeply, I would just mention that there's another Jack Cole event that um, people might be interested in. We're now at the Hammer Museum in the Billy Wilder Theater. That's where the UCLA Film and Television Archive has their public events. And on Saturday night, August 4th, we are screening a very arcane movie that Jack Cole choreographed that no one has seen. It's fallen very much out of circulation. The star of the movie, Mitzi Gaynor, is going to be with us in person. And it's going to really be a moment when Mitzi Gaynor comes out after we watch the way she dances in this movie in 1953. I am just very excited to be in the room when, when, that, when that happens. So uh, August 4th, Saturday, August 4th, UCLA Film and Television Archive. And the movie is called The I Don't Care Girl. <laughs> I am arguing that there are three dance numbers in the I Don't Care Girl, which are the greatest film, the greatest pieces of choreography that ever been captured on film. <laughs> Until I saw those, you know, the Georgian, uh, Georgian spinners. So anyway, it's, it, Jack Cole was a genius. He lived in our city. He was unhappy in Los Angeles. He was lonely in Los Angeles. And yet in Los Angeles, he made amazing art. And it happened in the film business. It actually happened down the road on Pico Boulevard at 20th Century Fox. And it really matters that this happened. And it's kind of been written out of dance history because, I mean, not to be too combative, but the New York narrative has so dominated in my, in my art form that, you know, like nothing outside of New York really, really counts. And so uh, I'll just, and I'm going to stop and then you can interact with me. No, no, no. I'm just, Pacific Standard Time was also kind of, it kind of radicalized me for California art and for Los Angeles art. And so I'm, I'm trying to promote this particular artist. This is my guy. I love him. I, I think he belongs right up at the top with the biggies. And I'm talking Jerry Robbins, dare I say, Mr. Balanchine. I mean, I can say it in this room, but there are rooms that you cannot say that. Uh, <laughs> You know, and certainly Bob Fosse, who kind of stole Jack Cole's thunder, stole his woman, because Gwen Verdon, who married Bob Fosse, was trained by Jack Cole and was a Jack Cole dancer before she went with Fosse. I have a combative personality, and I like making little wars, so you guys should just flatten out what I'm saying. It's, it's all good. Fosse's great. Balanchine's great. <laughs> There can be many geniuses, but, you know, I have my guy, and I'm really... So, yeah, so can we scroll a little bit yeah, with, with yeah. Cole? So he's uh, rehearsing Marilyn Monroe in... Um, I, 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 I forget things. Let's Make Love, 1960, with Yves Montand. And she does, uh, my heart belongs to daddy. And this is, yeah, she comes down a big pole. It's a mess. Monroe was already a mess by this point, as compared to seven years earlier in 1953 when he worked with her on Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, which is a masterpiece, and Monroe is fantastic in it. So here he is. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, it's a great shot. This is early Jack Cole. This is 1947. There he is. What second from the, is this the right? I, I don't know my right from my left. 
he's in black, and you can really see the shape that he's making with his body. I mean, they're all good dancers, but for me, Cole just really stands out. He, he had an extraordinary ability to kind of hold shapes. He was extremely, mu- you see his musculature, and it's a kind of dancing that we don't have anymore. There's like a hyperkineticness in dance now, and so something about these shapes that this guy made and his ability to kind of hold them, not, it just really speaks to me. I mean, you can see he was a gorgeous guy. He was a gym rat before anyone went to the gym. He was a bodybuilder. And he said, you know, I, I have his writing. He said things like, oh, like, if I don't get in the gym every three days, like, I get crazy, you know. This was in 1941. Like, nobody said that in 1941. So, so this is Jack Cole. Okay, let, let's see another. Uh, this is a Life magazine shot. And the influence here is Jitterbug. This is Lindy Hop. Um, I'm giving you a kind of a hodgepodge of his career, but he was a devotee of, he went up to Harlem when he was in New York to the Savoy Ballroom, and he danced in black dance clubs. He, he was a channel of African-American movement into the mainstream white film world. It's very fascinating. He had many, many ethnic influences, but African-American dance was one of them. Uh, this just gives you, this is, this is, yeah, just gives you a taste of the intensity of his, of his, his physique. So here he is working with Marilyn, and this is Diamond Zur Girl's best friend. This is a very rare photo, and there she is, you know. She, he would, uh, he famously worked with three bombshells of post-war film, Monroe, Rita Hayworth, and Betty Grable. And these pe- he rehearsed, 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 and then when they performed on the soundstage, he would mirror for them, like right next to the camera, and he coached them in their line delivery and also in song. He did Gilda. Put the blame on Mame, boys, when she strips which otherwise known as removing the condom. She strips her, and then she strips her. This guy is like right on the Jack Cole thing. No, that's, it's very good. Okay, here's Marilyn, uh, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Just a masterpiece. It's perfect. And I know because I've looked at it nine million times. Uh, again, you're getting a total hodgepodge. He danced with Denishon, the early modern dance pioneers, who also have L.A. roots, but... They were in New York. Jack Cole started with Denishon. Very esoteric modern dance. I'm not esoteric. What can I say? Bohemian modern dance troupe. So what really grabs me about his career is from Denishon to Marilyn Monroe. No one in American dance had a career like that, and it's, it's astonishing. And he went through ethnic dance. He became an Indian dance master. Because if you know about Denishon, they had this kind of exoticism and a kind of faux ethnic thing. Only Jack Cole of the Denishon group went further into ethnic dance. He was a master in Indian dance, and he's, he's just gorgeous there, I think. Hmm? Marilyn in Diamonds. Okay, this is not Marilyn Monroe. That... that I just stuck a picture of myself and Robert Osborne in there. So that's going to be uh, September 10th. It's a Monday. It's not Labor Day weekend. It's the next weekend. That Monday, starting at 5 p.m., I co-host f- four Jack Cole movies with, with Robert. And, yeah, it's very exciting. So there I am. Uh, this is something called The Gladiators. It, you know, uh, yes, Jack Cole was, was a gay man. Um, he was powerful. He was beautiful. Uh, he had great dancers around him, and they were just, they were super, super well-trained dancers around him. No, no. Kenneth, Kenneth Anger, the connection with Kenneth Anger was a Cold War, it was a blacklist thing that some of Jack's dancers had blacklist problems and they kind of ended up in Paris. And if you know Kenneth's career, Ken- Kenneth was in Paris for many years and he knew Jack Cole dancers in Paris. And so that's, that's how. This, of course, this is, uh, yeah, she's doing, the, she's doing the move. This is Rita Hayworth, Put the Blame on Mame. And, um, you know, the costume uh, Jack Cole influenced. If you, 
if you, you can see that it bears a lot of resemblance to what Marilyn Monroe wears in Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. They're, they're both strapless sheaths with opera gloves. But in Put the Blame on Mame, um, Jack Cole has Rita stripping, stripping the one glove. Okay, Mitzi, Mitzi, Mitzi Gaynor on Mitzi Gaynor. Okay, this is, this is a great dance photo. This is from the movie we're showing at the Hammer on August 4th, Saturday night. The I Don't Care Girl, roundly dismissed as one of the most turgid biopics 20th Century Fox ever churned out. It's about a... Um, queen of vaudeville from the turn of the century named Eva Tangway. Do people know her name? Eva Tang Tangway. Pa 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 Patrick Scott knows about. So it's a biopic about Eva Tangway. It had, the film had a choreographer. His name was Seymour Felix and he choreographed like a Seymour Felix. He, he actually was a, um, an old vaude vaudevillian himself and the point is, is that Daryl Zanuck literally snipped out several of his dance numbers and brought in Jack Cole. Jack Cole put the three dance numbers, this is one of them, I'm gonna talk about this in a second, but these are three masterpieces. And Jack Cole did absolutely nothing to integrate them into the rest of the film. So it, it, uh, they are completely uh, anachronistic. Uh, they are not set in the uh, 1908, 1909, 1910. It's, it's such a kooky movie. But the good news is it's only 80 minutes long, and it's got these three dance numbers. Now, the, sta the open staircase, the whole modern look of this is Jack Cole. He worked, he really, oh, I'm, I'm probably going over my time, but I'm, I'm almost done. He stratified, he kind of worked in the, in the frame in a way that, Kelly and Astaire, God bless them, you know, their whole thing was the full body centered in the frame. I mean, it's very beautiful what they did. But Jack Cole put boys at the bottom. He put Mitzi. I mean, she's literally floating in the center of the frame there, you know. And this is a wild number called I Don't Care. She sings and dances. It's a masterpiece. You got to see this on the, please come, please come. Anything else or is that? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he was very studly. He, I mean, I'm very attracted to him. Men and women both were attracted to him. He, he, was, he was gorgeous. Uh, but, um, and George Chakiris, who I am friendly with, uh, George Chakiris, who played Bernardo in West Side Story, told me that back in the day, kids, the dancers would take their dance pants, cut out the zipper, and put, you see these strings? That was a Jack Cole thing. They would get strings, and that was like a cool... He, he had, like, cool looks. He had cool looks. He wore keds. He wore sneakers. He was so hip. I mean, he was the bomb. So that's my presentation. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. And what, what I like... What I might say is, you know, Deborah was ready to dive into this with Jack Cole. She was the right person in Hollywood doing film, dance, and film and yes. stuff like that. But I don't that she didn't know she was going to get to this place. It no. was really kind of this magic and uncertainty yes. that yes. happened to you, and I, you took advantage. I of am it. I am besotted by this artist. Yeah, there you go. I love him, and we can be too.